Welcome to Evolution. Today we talked to Grant Stewart, who is the founder and CEO of Performance Matrix. He also has some great stories of his days as an actor in New York City. Let's start back at, at the beginning. Um, are you? Where did you? Where did you grow up? Where, where are you? I'm a Morgantown, from? West Virginia boy. Grew up on the Goshen Road on a farm. Actually, two different farms, two different uncles, two different farms. If I wasn't bailing hay on one, I was slinging horse manure or cow manure on the other. Very cool. So I would never trade that background, but I sure I'm glad I don't do it now. Yeah, yeah I grew up on a farm uh, in Doddridge County uh, before I moved to, to Bridgeport, so I have a You know it. Yeah, I know yeah. it, exactly. Milk cows? Uh, Angus. Angus? Angus. Oh, yeah, so I milk cows and slop me. the hogs and sheared sheep. and. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. So, you grew up in Morgantown through and through. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you, you have, later on in life, you got into uh, acting. Yeah. Did you, I, go to, did you go to college for that? Or kind yeah, of I, uh, my uncle was in theater, and uh, we taught at WVU, and uh, I, as a kid, I went to see all the plays, and I really didn't have much interest in it. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, and he had offered, I had gotten an offer to go to a high school speech and drama institute here at WVU, went mm -hmm. there and read a song. People started laughing. They laughed a little more. They laughed a little more. And by the time I finished reading this little song about an eighth grader who was in love with his math teacher, and I walked back to the, by the time I walked back to the room, they were applauding. And I made the decision. I said, well, I could do this. I was 16. And so that's when I went, uh, after I finished school here, uh, BFA, and uh, got a job at Arena Stage, right out of, actually, when I was a junior. Went down there with Living Stage 71, I think it was, and then came back, finished my degree, and ended up going to New York City for 15 years. I was a professional actor, director, acting coach, and uh, taught at the New York Academy of theatrical arts for about 12 years and uh, again another profession that I would never trade uh, I, I share that with people now I used to not but I share that with people now because it gave me the opportunity to understand the human condition because you study the human condition every day I mean my job was observ observation my job was Think, identifying how does a math teacher think, how does a you know construction worker think, how does a an attorney think, how does an, and you see all of those those different perceptions and perspectives on life, and uh, you get to understand why people think, why they behave the way they behave, and why they get results or why they don't get results in their life. So, so it was great. I would never trade that background for a million years. Yeah, I thought when I first met you, I thought that was one of them. More m most interesting, you know, aspects about you, because uh, I have a respect for theater. Um, the fact that you know that I understand how it can shape and mold somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, like when I'm doing oh, yeah. public speaking, even though I only did some stuff in high school with theater, it, it helped me get up and, and and learn how to do that type of stuff. So I thought that was really neat with you know the profession that you're in now with performance matrix and kind of coming from um, the, the theatrical and acting background and taking that and kind of using that. It, it's exactly the same. In, in theater, uh, you do a play, you have uh, um, set design, lighting design, costume design, props, you have all those different departments, and you have a theme, the theme of the play, which is the objective, which is the mission of the organization of the play. Right. And everyone, everything, every individual, every designer has to match that theme. And the director is the guy that brings that all together so that everybody's behaving in a way that supports the theme. Yeah. You know? And that's, so now you go to an organization, you have the mission of the organization, and either you're behaving in a way that supports the mission of the organization, and so is everyone who are in directors of different departments, right. managers of diff different departments, individuals in the organization, either they're supporting that mission and vision of the organization, and supporting the values, mm -hmm. or they're not, and uh, and so that parallel I, you know, it took me a while to figure it out. But I said this is exact, exactly the same as what I did in theater. So, yeah. no, that, that's that's really interesting. So tell me about how what what brought you back to West Virginia? Is this where we kind of get into how mm -hmm. Performance Matrix was born, or 
Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, actually, actually, it was nice. I decided after 15 years, and I was successful. I worked uh, in theater about at any given point. Um, about 80 percent of the actors, the actors' equity, actors are out of work in New York City at any given point. But I was either uh, um, doing voiceover, acting, doing film work, extra work, directing. I was in regional theaters, tra whatever. I was always doing something and taught at New York Academy. So I was, I was a fortunate individual to, to work. There was a point where I said, am I going to do this the rest of my life? Um, am I going to... I decided to come back and get another degree. That's what I decided. So I got a degree in management, leadership, development, human development. Um, and ended up working, I had a 30-second elevator conversation with a fellow by the name of Jack Bird, uh, ex executive director for the Center for Entrepreneurial Studies and Development. And I say his name because I want everybody to know he's the best mentor on the planet, a phenomenal mentor. We ended up where I ended up working with about 125, he was, in, he was an industrial engineer. I ended up working with about 125 organizations, all types and sizes, and the development there was unbelievable. We'd sell beyond our capabilities, which is smart, and we would catch up. There's an old commercial that said, we can do that, we can do that, we can do that. He hangs up the phone and says, how are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. Now, we, we weren't quite that clueless, <laughs> but we would say, okay, this is what they need. What do we need to put together yeah. to extend the sidewalk? The sidewalk to end here, yeah. but we extend the sidewalk, and we, would, and we were very successful at it. It was... It was it was the best background I think I could have ever gotten. To match what I did in New York right. and all that theater and all that understanding of the human condition, directing others, coaching. I was coaching individuals in the uh, late 70s, so long before it was an industry. So, I, so it was a great opportunity to, to just learn about healthcare, service, nonprofit, government. Yeah, so that's yeah, awesome. Yes. I, so. Jeff and I, uh, with our company, we, it's funny that you, you mentioned the you know we can do that because there's been multiple times to where I'll you know I'll close on on a deal with a client that you know they want something that's kind of outside of our box. Mm -hmm. We'll go to, I'll go to Jeff and Jeff will you know be like oh, we've never done that and, and we each time each time it's it's a kind of a nerve wracking experience because you you want to you want to put up and and provide a quality mm -hmm. product for your client but you know that's what's going to make you better. We know every time you know okay we haven't done this but we're going to figure out how to do this and mm -hmm. do it the best to our, our ability and better than anybody else. And it, it does, it progresses you. It's like you said, building that sidewalk. So that's really cool. There's a great there's a book by um, um, Marshall Goldsmith called What Got You Here Won't Get You There. And that's one of the things I do now is I coach uh, high-level individuals to go to the next level. And what we think is we think we what got us here is going to get us to the next level. But we, we don't know what we don't know. Right. And so when we start to get to that next level and we start using stuff that used to work, and it no longer works. Well, what's going on? Why can't why can't I get people to do what I want them to do? Why can't we get the results? Why can't I get the turnaround time? Whatever it is, and there's that challenge. So, uh, the, what I do in that level is coach individuals to get to that higher level, whether it's plant manager, mm -hmm. whether it's general manager, whether it's president, vice president, whatever that is. So. Yeah, let's let's take a, a step back and kind of break break down. Uh, Performance matrix and what, you know, where did where did that whole thing come from? Well, what what's, what started it and kind of explain okay. it well, what yeah, exactly it is. Great, great question. When I was uh, uh, I spent 15 years at, at the New York uh, at uh, um, the Center for Entrepreneurial Studies and Development, and then Jack uh, Jack was starting to wind down. He mm -hmm. started to to want to pull out, and he he'd done it was extremely successful with it. And uh, we worked with Northern Telecom, Macy's, Mall of America, JLG Industries, you know, IBM, NASA, just great opportunities. And Jack just started getting a little, he was ready to leave. And uh, at that point, I saw that the direction of the organization was changing significantly. So I said, well, I'm going to, you know, what do I do? And I ended up finding an organization that I affiliated with myself with. I'm a, uh, in a network of about 500 uh, individual firms nationwide and abroad, mostly North America, but all over the world. And uh, we, we, there was a process available 
uh, several processes, actually process improvement, uh, theory of constraints, you know, the, the Six Sigma kind of um, quality improvement, plus the uh, individual develop organizational development totally, uh, all the way from strategic planning, all the way down through to workforce development if we want it. So everything that takes place in an organization, we have incredible materials for, incredible processes for, and we go to quarterly development uh, sessions so that we can we stay on top of it and we continue to learn and grow. So, and so I launched uh, the center from here, and uh, I'm very fortunate now to uh, probably have worked with a, I'm well into the 200, working with 200 plus organizations. And, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. So that's that's really cool. yeah, uh, so. Jeff. I know you work with uh, work with with us, and Jeff's been through you know a couple of your your, your programs, um, and you know w what he's benefited from that. It's cool talking to some of your clients, and we we're doing an, an image film for you, and what all of them have said. It, it's funny because it works for the major CEO executives of an organization mm -hmm. to. The, an employee at a, at a bookstore mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. people that own and run, you know, mm -hmm. a mid-sized marketing agency like we do. Um, talk to me a little bit about how how Performance Matrix works for okay. any individual and why you know why it does work for any individual. Okay. Well, well I, I'm a firm believer that well, I know this that deep within each individual there exists an in, a personal genius that is theirs and theirs alone they are or have the potential to be the best that they can be at something and leave other people in the dust. Mm -hmm. that, that is my purpose, is to help individuals discover that personal genius if they don't know what it is or at the same time, and at the same time expand that and, and drill in deeper and deeper and deeper so that they can become passionate and fall in love with what they do mm -hmm. to develop fulfillment in their business in their personal lives, in their prof professional lives, family, relationships, in all aspects of their life. And that's why I do what I do. Because, it, because I've seen it happen, I've seen that, per, that, that full expression in individuals when they latch onto it. And so, so I give them the opportunity to say, you know, whether it's one individual, uh, sole proprietorship, or whether it's, um, you know, uh, Saint-Cobain company, I'm working, French company I'm working with, uh, um, you know, um, Henny Penny, which is an organization out in, in Eaton, Ohio. Walk me through, you know, in a nutshell, some of your, you know, how you interact with, with your clients. Like, what, what is a typical um, coaching session work? Do you have, you know, one-on-one -on -one sit-downs like we're, we're having mm -hmm. here? I mean, mm -hmm. I know you but, do leadership conferences and meetings with a larger number of folks. Kind of walk me through what performance matrix kind of the adaptability and different different uh, types of coaching you're doing. Okay, well, one of the things was like I said earlier, I coached actors in the late '70s, and I ended up in the uh, even before coaching became an industry. When I was at CESD, I was coaching um, physicians, I was coaching uh, managers, leaders, and and like the Department of Energy uh, because of whatever challenges they were having. So, uh, and plus, when we worked with those very large corporations, we would go in and we would develop their people to develop their people, kind of cascade a whole process mm -hmm. throughout. So we developed their, lead, their facilitators and their coaches, so we coached people how to coach others. So we were certifying people in Northern Telecom, in, in Macy's, in JLG Industries, and a whole variety of organizations. Um, Again, long before there, it was an industry, and then uh, when so I've had, uh, I've had the opportunity to learn to get certified by a number of coaching certifications. So whatever I do depends on what the individual's needs are. Wherever you are now, what you've, what your concerns are, what your situation is, what's working for you, what's not working. Then we and we identify that first, and then we say, where do you want to be? What do you want your future state to look like? Once we've determined that and, and agreed that that's where you want to go, then we develop, we call it an intervention because we know it won't get better by itself. So we pers we develop an approach specifically to, to whatever it is you want to accomplish or achieve, be, do, or have. Um, so what's, you know, kind of kind of wrapping up. Oh, I know. I wanted to say, can I just, I yeah, wanted yeah, to throw yeah, in there that, that we do it for, like you said, for individuals. What does that look like? We do it for individuals, one-on-one. Uh, we do it uh, with um, 
uh, intact work teams, uh, leadership teams, you know, executive teams. Uh, we do coaching for, and it's always towards results. It's always towards that future state. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not ultimately to become a better manager, better leader. You become a better person. It's about self leadership, self mastery, ultimately right. leadership of others. But without that, how can you expect to lead others? And exactly. and that's where that's where we we found people just stumble all along is because they 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 think that I need to learn to lead others before I need to learn to lead myself. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of coaching over the phone as well. I've done coaching with groups over the phone. Um, uh, University of California, San Francisco, their IT department. I've also done, I'm doing, in, I have a coaching client in China. I have a coaching client in uh, Australia, uh, one in France. So it, it varies. I love the group dynamics. I just love that because I've had that experience over the years and getting the group to come to a result, uh, a, an agreed upon result. But I also love working with the individual and seeing their, them discover. So it's, I, I'm very, very fortunate to get to do what I do because I love it. And the one thing about it is there, that there's a key process, there are a number of processes I use, but there's a key process that I use that works so well that I'd love to take the credit, but I know enough to stay out of the way of the process, to let the process do the work. Mm -hmm. And when you do, when you agree to do what the process asks you to do, it's impossible to fail you can only get the dynamic results from it. I, I've seen it over and over and over again. 